Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the sequential criterion for limit of a function. Suppose a is a subset of the real numbers, f is a function from a to the real numbers, and c is a cluster point of a. Then the following are equivalent. One, the limit as x approaches c of f is equal to l, and two, for every sequence xn in a that converges to c, where xn is not equal to c for all positive integers n, the sequence f of xn converges to l. Now, to prove that 1 and 2 are equivalent, we are going to prove if 1 is true, then 2 is true. And then we're going to prove if 2 is true, then 1 is true. Let's first prove if 1 is true, then 2 is true. And to start, let's suppose that 1 is true. Which means we are supposing that the limit as x curved to c of f is equal to f. What does this mean? Well, by definition of the limit of a function, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for all x and a, if zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Now, for us, it turns out it's going to be more convenient if we re-express this as absolute value of x minus c is less than delta and x is not equal to c. Right, so really, this is equivalent to what we had before. So now, our whole goal is to prove that 2 is true. And notice, we're trying to prove a statement about every sequence in A with this property. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary sequence in A with this property. I'll call it xn. And the whole goal from here is to show that the sequence f of xn converges to L. Now, first of all, what does it mean for f of xn to converge to L? Well, by definition of limit of a sequence, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of f of xn minus l is less than epsilon. Now, we're given that our sequence xn converges to c. And by definition of the limit of a sequence, to say that xn converges to c means the same thing as this, it's just instead we have xn and c here. Remember, the whole goal is to prove that f of xn converges to l, which means we want to prove that this second statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive real number, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive real number. We'll call it epsilon. From here, we want to find a positive integer k such that this is true. Now, since we know that the limit as x approaches c of f is equal to l, this means we know that this first statement is true. And this first statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon that we have in our proof. So taking epsilon to be the epsilon we have in our proof, we have that this statement is true. So there is some delta greater than zero, such that for all x and a, if this is true, then this is true. Well then, let's use the fact that xn converges to c, which means we know that this third statement is true. And this third statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number delta that we have right here. So taking epsilon to be the delta we have here, we have that this is true. So there is some positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn minus c is less than delta. Now remember, 
our goal has been to prove that f of xn converges to l. And we're in the process of finding a positive integer k such that this is true. Well, our claim is that if we take k to be the positive integer k that we currently have in our proof, well, then this statement will turn out true. So let's take k to be the positive integer k that we have in our proof. From there, we proceed to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about all positive integers is greater than or equal to k, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. We'll call it n. From here, we want to show that this inequality is true. Now, since we know that this statement is true, well, we know that this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to k. So in particular, it must work for n. So taking n to be the n we have here, we have that this inequality is true. And furthermore, since every term in the sequence xn is distinct from c, we can be sure that xn is distinct from c. And now let's use the fact that this statement is true, right? This statement says for all x in a, if this is true, then this is true. So if we take x to be xn, then we know that if xn is distinct from c and the absolute value of xn minus c is less than delta, then we can be sure that the absolute value of f of xn minus l is less than epsilon. Well, we know that xn is distinct from c, that's what we have here, and we know that the absolute value of xn minus c is less than delta, that's what we have here. Therefore, we can conclude that the absolute value of f of xn minus l is less than epsilon. And that is precisely the inequality we wanted to prove. So we have proven this statement. And that proves that f of xn converges to l. So what we've shown here is, given an arbitrary sequence in A with these properties, the sequence f of xn will converge to l. So we have proven that 2 is true. So we have proven if 1 is true, then 2 is true. Now we're going to prove the other direction. We're going to prove if 2 is true, then 1 is true. And to prove the other direction, we're actually going to prove the contrapositive. That is, we're going to prove if 1 is false, then 2 is false. We're allowed to do that because that's equivalent to saying if 2 is true, then 1 is true. So let's assume that 1 is false. Which means we are supposing that the limit as x approaches c of f is not equal to l. What does that mean? Well, it's precisely the negation of this first statement. And the negation of this first statement is to say that there is some epsilon greater than zero, such that for all delta greater than zero, there is some x in a such that this is true but this is false. That would be the negation of this statement. And to say that this is false means that absolute value of f of x minus l is greater than or equal to epsilon. Now, instead, I'm going to call this value epsilon naught, just because later on in the proof, we are going to introduce some arbitrary epsilon. So, yeah. But now we've ran out of room, so let's move back up to the top. So we've assumed one is false, and the whole goal is to prove that two is false. But what does it mean for 2 to be false? Well, to say that 2 is true means for every sequence in A with this property, this is true. The opposite of that is to say that there exists a sequence in A with this property, but this is false.
In other words, it means that there is a sequence xn and a that converges to c, where xn is not equal to c for all positive integers n, but the sequence f of xn does not converge to l. So the whole goal from here is to prove that this statement is true. And we're actually going to define what the sequence xn should be right now. Notice, for each positive integer n, 1 over n is greater than 0. And since 1 over n is greater than 0, well, let's go back to the statement we have here. We know that for all delta greater than 0, this statement is true. So in particular, if we take delta to be 1 over n, we have that there exists an element x in a such that x is not equal to c, and absolute value of x minus c is less than 1 over n. But the absolute value of f of x minus l is greater than or equal to epsilon naught. Now instead, I'm going to denote x by xn. So this is what we get. And so this gives us a sequence xn, because if we consider the positive integer 1, well, we have an element x1 in A with these properties. If we consider the positive integer 2, we have an element x2 in A with these properties. If we consider the positive integer 3, we have an element x3 in A with these properties, and so on and so forth. And so, we know that our sequence belongs to A. So that property is covered. We don't know, however, whether or not our sequence converges to C. However, it's suggested that our sequence converges to C because absolute value of xn minus C is less than 1 over n for all positive integers n. Since 1 over n goes to 0, this means we should expect the difference between xn and C to go to 0, and so xn should converge to C. We do know that xn is not equal to c for all positive integers n. That's precisely what this is saying. But we do not know yet that our sequence f of xn does not converge to l. But it's suggested that f of xn does not converge to l because of this fact, right? The absolute value of f of xn minus l is greater than or equal to some fixed positive real number for all positive integers n. So this tells us that f of xn always stays some fixed distance away from L. And so that suggests that it shouldn't converge to L. So all that's left is to show that these two properties hold. Let's first show that Xn converges to C. What does it mean for Xn to converge to C? Well, by definition of the limit of a sequence, it means the following. It means this. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive real number, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive real number called epsilon. From here, we want to find a positive integer k such that this is true. Well, by the Archimedean property, we can pick some positive integer k such that 1 over k is less than epsilon. Our claim is that the positive integer k that we're looking for is the positive integer k we have in our proof right here. So taking k to be the k we have here, we proceed to prove that this statement is true. Since we're trying to prove a statement about all positive integers greater than or equal to k, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. Call n. From here, we proceed to prove that this inequality is true. Well, if we write out the left-hand side, we know that this inequality is true for all positive integers n. So this guy must in fact be less than 1 over n. But then since n is greater than or equal to k, if we take the reciprocal of both sides of this inequality, we get that 1 over n is less than or equal to 1 over k. And 1 over k is less than epsilon. And that shows that this guy is less than epsilon, which is what we wanted to show. So we have proven this statement which proves that xn converges to c. So 
that proves this property. All that's left to show is that f of xn does not converge to L. So now, how do we show f of xn does not converge to L? Well, what does that mean? Well, we're negating the definition of the limit of a sequence. And so, let me first write out what it means for f of xn to converge to L. This is what it means for f of xn to converge to L, but we want to prove that f of xn does not converge to L. So we're negating this statement. Well, the negation of this statement is to say that there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that for all positive integers k, there exists a positive integer n greater than or equal to k, such that this is false. So to prove f of xn does not converge to L, this is the statement we want to prove. Well, we got to find a positive real number that makes this statement turn out true. Our claim is that epsilon naught will make this statement turn out true. So taking epsilon to be epsilon naught, we would like to show that this statement is true. Well, since we're trying to prove a statement about all positive integers, we would give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer. And let's just call it k. From here, we would like to show that this statement is true. Well, our claim is that if we take n to be k, then the absolute value of f of x sub k minus l is greater than or equal to epsilon naught. If we can show that that's true, then that would prove that f of xn does not converge to l. Well, it is in fact true that the absolute value of f of x sub k minus l is greater than or equal to epsilon naught, because this statement is true for all positive integers n. So in particular, it must be true for k. Therefore, this inequality is true. So it's pretty easily shown that this statement is true. So I'm not actually going to write it out. Sorry, but yeah. Essentially, this fact right here is doing all the heavy lifting for us. So this tells us that f of xn must not converge to L. So that shows that this property holds. And so we have shown all the requirements which proves two is false. And so we have proven if one is false, then two is false. By the conch positive, that's equivalent to proving if two is true, then one is true. And so we have proven that one and two are equivalent. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.